Tuesday, everyone. Welcome, welcome to Office Hours. I've got uh, my guest, Alicia Everson, here with me today. Hi, Alicia. Hi, how's it going? Good, good. So uh, as we do every Tuesday, we're here to answer your questions about Alexa, certification, development, uh, voice design, whatever it may be, we're here to try and help. And so uh, if you have any questions, we would be more than happy to take them. And in fact, we do already have a couple of questions uh, in the queue, uh, starting with Benjamin Anderson on YouTube, who says, I watched the UK office hours last week, which by the way, if you guys didn't know, um, they are doing UK office hours uh, again. They've restarted them. They're on Wednesdays. Um, and I believe that they are at approximately 9 a.m. Eastern. That would be 6 a.m. Pacific, kind of early for you Pacific coasters. Um, but you can find that in the same place as you're finding this. Uh, it'll just be uh, on a different day, different time, and a couple of folks from uh, Europe that are doing a fantastic job of getting that restarted. So the question was, I saw they were talking about the deprecation of the render document template. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the Alexa team will change the layout editor if the templates are depreciated. I foresee some new utilities in the future. So uh, I don't have anything to offer you about the future, unfortunately. Um, but I, what I can tell you is that um, they've realized that there is a lot of uh, overhead and flexibility that they need. And so deprecating those render templates was an uh, unfortunate necessity. Uh, and I'm, I'm really optimistic about where we can go with APL, where we can go with a lot of the design and our skills. Um, and I know that even on the APL Ninja website, which is a third party website put on by Alexander Martin, um, there are APL versions of all of the initial render template render template documents that we had, uh, which were things like uh, the list templates and the display templates um, that we used for a number of different things early, early on in Alexa development. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing where that goes, but if you're looking for an easy way to get transferred over, I would say look at APL Ninja. They have some fantastic templates that you can use to easily kind of modify your skill instead of using the, the render directive, use the APL directive. So that is step one. Uh, and one of the things I'm going to try to be better about today is writing everyone's questions down. So I'm going to take Benjamin's question um, and let's put that right here. So one of the things I want you guys to see, share my screen, is if I come in here and I choose share screen, choose that. So there's Alicia and I, and then I have a uh, Word doc. So you guys can see this, this document is something that I then parse and put into uh, a report that gets shared with our leadership once a month, and they get to see all of the things that you guys are asking. So uh, if you guys have questions, please ask them. It's really important that you do, uh, because we use this information to drive the future of what goes on here at Alexa. And so um, it's really, really appreciated when, when you have confusion or when you don't understand something, or certainly if you're just like, hey, this is blocking me because of X, Y, and Z. We love to hear that stuff. So please, uh, please, please share that with us. Um, all right, so let's see. Uh, Stephen Brown says, when I download the clip from the tool and host it elsewhere, I'm having trouble connecting to the audio URI. Are there any ideas on that? Uh, Stephen, I need a little more context, and maybe I'm, maybe I'm just missing it, but I don't see it here in the chat. That's the first message of yours that I see. Uh, when you say download the clip from the tool, what clip, what tool? I want to make sure I understand what it is that you're working on and how I can help. But I, I don't, I know I need a little more context about what you're trying to do. Uh, Joel Farbel's here from France uh, on LinkedIn, as well as uh, Fabio Ferreira. So welcome, Fabio and Joel. Uh, let's see. Stephen said some more here. Maybe I can just make one AWS bucket public with a one 12 second clip and be okay. I don't know if that would solve it. Is it shouldn't matter where I host as long as I use SSL, right? Stephen, uh, if you're, it sounds to me like you're trying to play some sort of audio file, um, and you're having issues with where you're hosting it. I don't think that that's necessarily your issue. If you're trying to play audio files, there are some very specific rules about. Um, encoding bit rates and that kind of stuff that can cause issues with your uh, your audio. And so um, I would love to know more about what you're trying to do. But in the meantime, let me see if I can find that. Um, Alexa, this is no audio. Let's go to the 
Uh, I know you guys can't see my screen. I will show you in one moment. So, okay. So this is the audio tag in the SSML reference guide. Um, and so what you can see, if I go to the very top, this is the speech synthesis markup language reference. Uh, but all I did was type in Alexa SSML audio, and then I just clicked on this audio tag here. And this takes me to how I import MP3 files into an Alexa skill. I think this might be the issue you're talking about, Stephen, and why your audio is not working. But you want to make sure that you're checking these specific values for, uh, for your audio files. The two that stand out to me specifically are one, your bit rate has to be 48 kbps, um, and the sample rate must be one of these three. So if you're not using 48 kbps and you're not using one of those sample rates, then your audio file will either not work or it will throw an error. And so you're going to want to make sure, <clears throat> regardless of where you're hosting it, um, that you're meeting those two requirements. The other thing to consider is that um, your total audio for all audio files cannot be more than 240 seconds. And the combined total time for one can't be more than 90. I think they also have, maybe they got rid of that requirement. Let's see. Uh, I don't I don't see that requirement anymore, but Alicia, I got to imagine you've seen this at some point. Um, I have, uh, let me give you a quick example. I, I built a skill that has tons and tons of different achievements. And while for the most part, you'll only unlock one achievement at a time, it is possible that you could unlock two or three or four. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, all, all because of the same activity. And so one of the things that I wanted to do was have a little intro sound that played, like a little ding or a splash or something like that, and then achievement unlocked, and then I tell you what your achievement was. Um, and then the thought was is that I'd play that same audio file before each of the achievements that you unlock. But this is obviously very dynamic content and not something that is uh, easy to predict. And what I found was is that I had a couple of people that were getting errors because they found a way to unlock five achievements at once. And because I was using two audio files per achievement, I was hitting a limit, which I think the maximum number of audio files you can play in one response is five. But I don't see that requirement here. Have you, one, Alicia, have you seen that? Two, um, do you know did that change? Because I feel like that used to be a thing. Um, I actually haven't seen that requirement, so I'm not sure. Um... Okay. I mean, yeah. they do have it limited by time, which is fine. Most of my sound effects were only a second or two. Mm -hmm. But I feel like there was also a limit of no more than five, and I just don't see that written here. Interesting. So maybe they, maybe they changed it. Yeah, maybe they did. All right. I don't, I don't have a good answer for that, but hopefully we're helping you, Stephen Brown, navigate uh, the answers. It is spoken audio, not music. That's fine, Stephen. Um, but it's still an MP3 file. It's still audio, correct? Fabio says, I sound like a robot. Does anyone else have Jeff the robot on, on the stream? Alicia, do I sound like a robot to you? Mm, it sounds a little bit like more high-pitched or maybe tinny than before, but I'm not sure. What if I come over here in front of the microphone? Does that make a difference? Uh, seems about the same to me. Huh. Yeah. I, don't think I, I don't think I've changed anything here. Hmm. Oh, you know what? Let me try one more thing. Let's see if I go to audio. What now? That oh, that's much better. Yes. That sounds a whole lot better. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I have a webcam plugged in that's way across the room. And apparently it shows that as the microphone that I would use today. So that is the issue. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> We're back now. So, okay. So the audio sounds better. All right. So let's. No, Stephen, the, the first, uh, I mentioned this earlier. The first thing, the first comment that I see of yours is when I download the clip from the tool and host it elsewhere, I'm having trouble connecting to the audio URI. That is the very, very first comment that I see from you in the chat. So if there's more, I'm definitely not seeing it. Um, we'll, we'll come back to Steven in just a second. So he was in the Jovo tech tool. Okay. Lisa hard says, will there be better, better compatibility with smart TVs? Current apps don't work consistently or at all. Uh, Lisa, I, I don't know about that because ultimately that will come down to, um, the smart TV manufacturers, I think more than anything, 
Um, here is my general recommendation for everybody always is that um, smart TVs aren't good. Maybe that's, yeah, I think that's what I'm saying. Smart TVs aren't good. So the TV themselves, great, great technology, great at showing a picture, great at playing audio. Um, but what smart TVs tried to do was democratize like all the app stores. The problem with that is that they all have their own unique requirements, their own development kits, their own SDKs, whatever. And so what ends up happening is that in order to support a bunch of different TVs, either a company like Amazon has to build 50 different versions of their app to run on all these smart TVs, or they just don't support them at all. Or more likely, the TV manufacturer themselves makes those apps. Uh, they hire a team of developers to make a lot of that stuff, and it just doesn't get the kind of revs that it would if it was a true production thing. So. Lisa, if you have a specific TV in mind, um, I'd be happy to take a peek. But my recommendation for everybody, and this is something that I give advice about with smart home and that kind of stuff all the time, is that you should buckle in, spend the $20 to $100, depending on which one you get. Get something like a Roku or an Apple TV um, uh, or even a, uh, a Chromecast and use something like that instead because you will find that those apps, those app ecosystems are compatible with the big ones, right? So um, I can build an iOS app for Apple and I can build it for the watch and I can build it for Apple TV. Uh, and it's very, very similar architecture. The same goes for the Google side of the house. Uh, and the same goes for Roku, right? Roku um, is a really big ecosystem anymore and runs on a lot of different things. Um, so I would be very curious to know about that because you're saying better compatibility. Um, but I don't know which apps you're currently working with. Are you trying to use Alexa directly through the TV? Are you using a Fire TV that has the built-in smarts already and you're trying to go that route? Uh, there's a, Like you can see, there's a thousand variables here, so I'd love to know a little more about that stuff as well. I do see that Gold Zulu and Startup and Oxygen Box and W Giorgio are here. Um, Acteris1234 has a question for us, but I haven't gotten to it yet, so when I see your question, I will do my best to answer it. Gavin Watson wants to know what level of information is available about the skill user's location. I'm interested in gathering stats from users using our skills without any special permission, not for any malicious reason. Just wondered what granularity is available regarding the user's location. If additional permission is needed, how does that work when the user installs the skill? Uh, Alicia, do you have any thoughts on this one? Um, for this one, I'm pretty sure that you do need to get the customer's um, uh, permissions to be able to get their their location information. Um, and it pops up in their app uh, when they install your skill. You can see like the display card will show um, to add permissions to the skill. And then basically it routes them within the app to where they can enable permissions for um, location. Right, so that's my experience too. And there's, there's two levels of um, user location, both of which require permission. The first is address, city, state, zip, and you can kind of choose how complex you want that to be. Maybe you just need their zip code. Maybe you need their full address. Um, and then there is also a actual GPS coordinate location that you can request. Um, again, different permission and uh, only available on specific devices. So the echoes and things that I have in my house here, most of the ones behind me don't. But things that run through the, the phone app, like the, the Echo Frames, the Echo Loop, um, and the Echo Buds, all of those, because they're traveling through the app on the phone, they can provide GPS location, which makes sense for a lot of on-the-go scenarios where somebody might be at a, a corner of a, a street in a city and they need to know how to get somewhere, you can give them audible directions. Echo Auto is another good example of an on-the-go device uh, that provides that kind of GPS coordinate location, but only if the user has provided that permission. And that gets to your next question, which was, let's see if I can get back to the actual question. Um, how does that work when the user installs the skill? So by default, if they just open the skill with their voice, um, it won't say anything to them, uh, but it will it will not be able to access that information. So you should be doing some checks to say, um, hey, it looks like I don't have permission to do this. Please um, go into the app and make this change. And they have to actually open the app and go in and make a change in their settings inside the app. Um, that, is, uh, that is how that works. So in order to set any kind of permissions inside uh, a skill, they have to go into the Alexa app, find that skill, and change those permissions. It's a one-time thing, but they do have to do it. 
Um, so that is uh, that is where that stands, Gavin. Hopefully that helps answer your questions anywhere anymore. Uh, a Witter says Jovo has a conversion tool for audio files to meet the Alexa SSML spec. That's great. So uh, the the Jovo uh, Jovo Tech audio converter is very very cool. Uh, so I'm guessing you can just drop any MP3 file you have in there and it'll convert it to the appropriate specs. That's really nice. Um, hey guys, quick question. This um, this comes from O1 Pollux, uh, and this is a good conversation for you and I, Alicia. Hey guys, quick question. What year would you predict for Alexa to be more like Samantha from the movie Her? Did you see that movie? I did, yeah. Did I you actually, see it? I saw the previews, but I actually haven't seen the movie yet. Um, but I understand the, the core premise of it. So I think the first thing we should say is I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> when that will happen. But I'm curious from your perspective, Alicia, because uh, I, I enjoy the conversation about these topics. How would you feel about having that kind of personal AI available to you? Um, I don't know. It's sort of like a double-edged sword. Uh, like it can be a little scary seemingly, sure. um, but I don't know. It sort of depends, I guess, on how far the technology goes and like how well it can get to know you. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, there's a there's a talk I've given a few times on on this exact idea, kind of this personal, friendly, um, knowledgeable, uh, personal AI. And one of the things that I always talk about right out of the outset of that is the idea of trust and how you like this is something that you have to trust inherently. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I use the the idea of a sunrise. Like there is almost nothing I could say. To, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure there's nothing I could convince you of that would t that would make you think that there won't be a sunrise tomorrow, right? Like you, with all your heart, believe the sun's going to come back up tomorrow, regardless of what I tell you. Like right. there, I don't think there's a single thing I could do. You'd just be like, whatever, man, you're crazy. <laughs> um, I feel like that's kind of where we need to be in many ways with a lot of this AI stuff is I need to trust just without a doubt that it's going to work, that it's going to do what it needs to do. And obviously that it's going to protect and keep any information that it has safe and secure. Um, that's a hard hurdle to get over for sure. Yeah. But I think once we get there, um, all sorts of crazy scenarios can be unlocked right now. Now I basically have like this second entity it can handle all the stuff that I don't want to do anyway, right? Like I would imagine you probably don't enjoy paying your bills. No. Um, <laughs> like it's, that's not a thing I ever really want to do. In fact, if I could just stop paying my bills entirely, that would be great. Yeah. Um, but we know that that money needs to go out, right? We have to pay for things in order to make them happen. Um, but I would love for me to not have to worry about any of that. I'd love to just go to work and whatever. And then one day that same AI is like, hey, Jeff, did you know if, if you wanted to retire today, you could. Like what a, what a great conversation that <laughs> Um, but yeah. I think a lot of our, our trust, our technology is a lot more like, um, these pretty expensive Bluetooth headphones, right? I love them. They work really well most of the time, but if I put them on and they don't connect to my computer, I'm not surprised because that <laughs> happens sometimes, right? Like, right? It just doesn't work sometimes. <laughs> and I think if that's where we are in a conversational AI ambient computing kind of world, uh, I don't think people are going to use it. Right. It needs to be better than that for sure. Yeah. Especially with things like, like paying bills. That's something that you really have to trust the technology with if you're going to rely on it for that. Right. Yeah. Completely agree. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see if I can find some more questions here. So, So W. Giorgio said he made a video of a moving background and put a PNG in front of the video in APL, and it worked. So uh, the the scenario I'm imagining, W. Giorgio, that you're describing here is that like you have a static PNG of like a cartoon character, and then you have an animated background that makes it look like maybe he's walking or moving, or maybe it's a car, so it's a little less obvious he's not walking, right? And you can have the car transparently sit on top of a video. Is that kind of what you're going for? Uh, that's pretty cool though. And so Owen Pollock still wants to know, well, I, they may have said this before we started talking, but they were asking about how long we thought the Samantha from her would take to get here. 
I don't know the right answer. Um, I don't know that we'll ever actually get to something like that. Um, that's a very, very hard problem to solve. But yeah, that's um, that's a good question, man. There's been a ton of comments that I've um, had just had load in here. Okay, so I, I don't know if it's five years or 10 years, but I think we will have a much more conversational ambient experience with AI um, probably by the end of this decade, I would think. Uh, that's nine years. I think that there, there will be a lot of advancements in the next nine years. I would agree with that. Uh, Pisces Chang says, I used to be able to play Jeopardy in the Alexa dev console. I would go into any skill, and then in the test view page, I would just tell Alexa to play Jeopardy. It's worked up until last Friday. Now when I do it, I just get a black window where the Jeopardy window would be. There's no audio or video displayed. I know it kind of works because if I tell an Echo device to play Jeopardy after attempting to play the console test page, we say I already started to play and would I like to resume? Can anyone else play Jeopardy in the console? Well, I've never tried that. Uh, let's go try that. I'm, uh, I'm bringing my skill, my screen back up. Go to the testing tab on this random other skill that I'm working on. Um, play Jeopardy. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if, but you can do that with other skills that you haven't opened. I wonder if I were to say, it's another uh, example of a skill that I like. Um, play. Song quiz. Welcome back to song quiz. A song quiz works. Nice. You unlocked an additional 500 songs in song quiz this because you linked your Amazon account. I'm doing account. exactly what you're describing. How many people want skill? to play song quiz? You can say one to four. I wonder if um, I wonder if there's a bug in maybe our simulator that because Jeopardy is always on the bleeding edge of a lot of the technology that we have available, and I wonder if our simulator is choking on something that they're doing that might be in some kind of beta or something like that. That's my that's my guess. Um, but I wouldn't expect in general that we would block that kind of stuff. So Pisces Chang, I hope that answers your question. But no, I had the same experience you just did with Jeopardy. And eight waiters just checked. No more than five audio files can be used in a single response. So I was right about oh. that. You should add that to the documentation. Mm -hmm. He um, copied this. Go here. We have to come back and get all these questions. We should mention. No, that definitely used to be a rule. I was really hoping it had changed, but that is what it is. Okay, so we can take my screen back down for a moment. And let's see, uh, Octaris1234, I'd like to make an announcement. I have, I'd like to trigger Alexa and say, hi, the temperature is 10. Okay, so Octaris, unfortunately, um, what you're trying to do there is get Alexa to speak before the user has spoken to the device. And today that is not a possibility. So I have one exception to that rule. We, we tend to talk about this scenario almost every office hours, but um, I wanna make sure that you're, uh, that we're pretty clear on this. So in general, <clears throat> everything that Alexa does is driven by a user interaction first. So they will set up a routine so that the routine goes off a certain time or basically a trigger or whatever or they may just talk to their device and make that happen, but it always starts with the user doing something. And um, there isn't a way to just make a device just start talking and say, hey, the temperature is 10. And the reason for that primarily is that we don't know the device, the user's there. And so it seems very silly, silly to try to prompt them and give them information like a notification on your phone when they may not even be around to capture that. So we do have a notifications API and that allows you to put your message in a queue uh, it makes the yellow light on top of all the devices blink. And the user, when it's there, when when they're ready, they can say, hey, what are my notifications? And it'll tell them, including yours, what, what notifications they have. Um, there are a lot of applications of this that I would love to use. So exactly what you're describing for weather, but also for things like sports. Um, I follow um, baseball and American football. And in both of those cases, I would love to just have one of my devices 
when my team scores, I would love for it to just like turn on a light and like celebrate a little bit and like, woohoo, the Browns just scored a touchdown. Right. That happens once or twice a season. <laughs> so in, in those kinds of scenarios, I think it would be super awesome, but it's also really disruptive. And if a user doesn't realize why it's happening, uh, that can be confusing or frustrating, or they end up unplugging the device, which none of us want to have happen because then they can't use our skills and, and things like that. So we have to be very, very cautious about those things. And so today there isn't a way to just have a skill pop up and talk without the user having done something first. The one exception to that, and it still follows the rule, but there's, there's this weird gap, is the idea of using something called skill resumption, which is a new feature we launched at Alexa Live last year. Skill resumption allows you to say, tell Uber I want a ride. And then the skill says, okay, I'm going to find you a driver. I'll come back and tell you when I've got one ready for you. At that point, the skill closes, everything goes away, and there is an indeterminate amount of time in which the skill is going to wait. There's a server process running in the background. It's trying to find you a driver. It's trying to coordinate all that stuff. And then when it's ready, once it's finally gotten someone, which could be minutes. I know I live uh, in the suburbs of Columbus, Ohio. And for me to get an Uber, sometimes it's 15 minutes before I may even have a driver, let alone um, – they're on their way to my house, right? And then they're never around my house. So then I have to wait for them to drive. So in those kinds of scenarios, I could be waiting 15 minutes. And then because the skill is using skill resumption and because the user made this request, the skill can then pop back up and say, hey, I found your driver. It'll be there in eight minutes, right? And it can do that when it's ready. That's the only exception. Now there's a couple of rules to this. The maximum amount of time that you're allowed to wait is 24 hours. Um, and this also has to be done with user's permission. So that's another catch to all of this is that it's another permission-based uh, kind of outcome. So that, knowing that, you could potentially build something that says, hey, the weather is 10, but they, they would have to kick off that whole process once a day or something like that. Um, but it, that is about the best possible way you're gonna be able to do that. Okay. Uh, I am continuing to scroll down. Someone's saying there's an echo. Uh, I don't know if there's actually an echo, but Alicia, do you hear an echo? I don't, but maybe it's when I talk. I'm not sure. Okay. I don't hear it though. Okay, good. If you don't hear it, I don't hear it, then it doesn't exist, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, also, I hope that my audio is fine. Last time it was making a clicking noise, but- Yeah, no, you sound great today. Okay, perfect. Good, good. Oh, you know what? Check this out. Um, A. Witters was mentioning that I should just scroll down further. So remember we were on this file earlier and we were looking at the requirements for an audio file? Mm -hmm. He said, Jeff, scroll down a little further. Scroll down a little further. No more than five audio files can be used oh. as a response. Perfect. There it is. There it is. So <laughs> it does exist. Um, I knew that was there somewhere, but I just couldn't remember where to find it. It feels like if you just add that to this rule, then we don't... Uh, we don't, I mean, these are repeats. So it feels like just this guy needs a new home, maybe. That's true. Okay. Let's get back into this. Uh, someone was saying, hey, Jeff, check what microphone you have on. Yeah, I think we, we've we solved that. So that's how much how much farther behind we are. <laughs> <clears throat> Is there a way to get Alexa to trigger an AWS IoT core or a DynamoDB? Um, so if you're going the other direction, if you want Alexa to talk to a DynamoDB or any of the other AWS services, that's very doable. You just need to use their SDKs or their APIs to be able to do that. But yeah, that should be very doable. As far as finding specific samples, um, that's going to be a little trickier. I don't know that um, we have specific answers for you on most of the services, but uh, it is possible. Okay. Abuma one, we're back on the TV story. Um, Fire TV sticks are also another very good option for people. Um, but I would recommend living in the ecosystem of the devices. Don't, I, I don't, uh, Alicia, do you have a smart TV? No, I don't. Mm -mm. You don't? Um, I mean, almost every TV anymore comes with smart TV, right? Like it, it's got apps built in and whatever. And they're never well supported and they never run very well. Um, I'm always very disappointed by them. So I think you're better off just trying to get into like the Fire TV ecosystem. In my house, we're a Roku house. 
Um, I like Roku a whole lot better than I like Fire TV, even though obviously Fire TV has Alexa and stuff built in. The interface is just better for us. So <clears throat> uh, I, I use go ahead. I use uh, Google Chrome and Google Chrome. or uh, the Chromecast and also yeah. um, the Fire Stick. Perfect. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the one I like the least is actually the Apple TV. And the, the reason that I say that is because their remote is terrible. Um, oh. it, it's about this big. And oh. then on top of that, it's really thin. And the top of it is a touch screen. So you're constantly like swiping. Mm. Every time you pick up the remote, you, you're you clicking the button. Um, it just, it's not, it's surprising because Apple's usually very aware of that kind of stuff. And I just hate the remote. So mm. yeah. uh, we have one just to like cast our phones to and stuff, but we don't use it very much. That's fair. Um, let's see. Nicolo Salvi has a question. I'd like to make an announce. Oh, we already, we already saw that one. I think that's, that's a, probably a bot. Okay. Yeah, A. Witters has called out that like you can use the proactive events API to send a notification to the Alexa device, but the user has to ask to hear those notifications. That is accurate. Man, there's a lot of comments today. This is fantastic. Yeah, wow. Uh, I like every time I scroll a little bit, it just jumps down the page. <laughs> uh, let's see. So this this is probably a good one for you, Alicia. Um, it seems that the fallback intent is now mandatory, and uh, Drew Cosgrove is saying that this is causing severe issues for his existing skills. Pre previously, if the user said an answer that was out of bounds, Alexa would pass me what she thought the user had said, and I would respond accordingly. Over now, if the answer is out of bounds, I only get past the fallback intent and no further details. So I can't support any of the functionality above. I understand why it's useful for some skills, but many skill many of my skills are um, guessing skills, right? Like quizzes and, and things like that. What has your experience been with the the new fallback intent rules? You know, I haven't had a lot of experience with it yet. Um, okay. I have, we haven't seen as many questions about that. Interesting. So far. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. The fallback intent, uh, Drew, unfortunately, is necessary. And I, I saw this exact same message. I know you reached out to me, but it's been crazy. And I'm trying to get some solid answers for you. And I just haven't done that yet. So I will continue to work on this um, and see what I can do to come up with um, – better answers for you. But um, yes, the, the fallback intent is now mandatory. So Q311 wants to know, hey, I'm using Airtable with my custom Alexa skill. I have a table that has my user records and each user's high score. How can I get an overall high score for all my users? Um, let's see. I have a table that has my user records and each user's high score. How can I get an overall high score for all of my users? Q311, I feel like I need one more piece of information. Are you trying to take all of the scores from all of your users and add them up? Is that what you're asking? Just like, uh, how do I add all these values up? Uh, Alicia, I know a lot about this Airtable service, so I, I can certainly help you solve that problem if that's what you're looking for, uh, Q311. But if you're trying to identify the highest, like, so you have, every time the user plays a game, you enter a new record with their username and the score they got. If what you're actually trying to do is find the highest score that an individual user has had, that's a little more complicated, um, but we can talk through that. So let me know what you're thinking um, and we'll, we'll hopefully come back to that. Um, how can I customize the font color in the display skill? Uh, well, the text property in APL uh, I'm assuming Andre Becheret on YouTube that you are using APL for your display um, interface. And if that's the case, then all text has a color attribute that you can use to be able to set the color of the font. Steve Nelson says, is Alexa and friends at 10 a.m. Pacific or 12 noon Pacific? I'm seeing both times posted on Twitch, 10 a.m. and about 12 noon in schedule. Steve, it's actually neither. Um, it's actually 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. And I apologize if that is uh, 
if that is off. So the answer is there are Alexa and Friends episodes on Thursdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. That is always when those episodes happen. Um, so hopefully that helps. Raul Lopez wants to know when he could put a copy of himself at his desk, an Echo device that responds just like him, but with and with his knowledge base. Uh, Raul, the initial answer I'm going to give you is scary, and that is when you're willing to have all of your knowledge uploaded to a system. Um, I think the capabilities to do that will happen before the we all have the emotional capability to allow it, if that makes sense. Uh, if you can imagine a device or a, a computer entity somehow being able to represent you in all ways, make decisions the way you would make them, say words the way you would say them, that, that could be, it sounds appealing from the angle you're looking at it from, but I think it's also really bad because that means somebody else could also do that and they could impersonate you, they could, um, there, there's all sorts of crazy nonsense that could go on there. So be careful what you wish for, I guess, as well. <laughs> I wonder if it would also make you feel obsolete as a person, you know what I yeah. mean? Well, a, don't get me wrong, Alicia, I, I don't know how Raul's thinking about this, but for me, if I could have someone show up and do my job, and I could go live on a beach someplace, <laughs> well, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a fair point. Yeah, <laughs> uh, true. That, that would be pretty amazing. But the, the catch with all of that, and I think this is something a lot of people think of. Um, what was the, there was a, what was his name? Um, the actor that played Beetlejuice in the movies. Oh. Michael Keaton. Yes. He did another movie where he could clone himself. Oh. instantly, right? It didn't have to grow up or anything. It was just another version of him. This was probably in the late eighties, early nineties. I think I can't even remember the name of the movie, but he started cloning himself and having all these responsibilities off of his plate. And it started to backfire. Out. Um, but I, I think the problem we have with all of that is that if, if I am replaceable by artificial intelligence, I won't have a job to fake my way at because that company will just have that AI and it will do my job for me and I won't have a job. So right. there's, a, there's a lot of catch 22s there for sure. <laughs> also, is it multiplicity? Multiplicity. That right? Okay. That's the one. I didn't actually know it. I Googled it. So <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> um, but if you get a chance, it's a good movie. Um, okay. And it, this is way like that. When did that come out? In the nineties, it looks like uh, 96. Yeah. 96. I was a sophomore in college. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was four. Four? Years old. Right. Yes. <laughs> so you probably didn't see it. Nope. I have not seen that one. Uh, but if you like movies, that's a good one. Good yeah. actor. I'll check it out. Because I did like Beetlejuice. I did like him in that movie. So, right. yeah. Cool, cool. When did Beetlejuice come out? Was that like 89? Oh, man. Maybe. I don't actually know. Like, yeah, I want to say 89? 88. You were very close. All right. Yeah. Okay. Q311 said, I created a new Alexa hosted skill and I'm using Visual Studio Code. When I update my ENUS JSON file on my local computer and then I get add get commit, get push the interaction model on the developer.amazon.com website, it's not getting updated. What do I need to do to get that updated? What you are describing to me is the process that I would go through to make that happen. Uh, Alicia, have you seen anything on your side where people are trying to use Alexa hosted, push their files up, and they're just not seeing those files represented in the browser? Mm, I haven't seen that issue yet, no. QU311, I don't have a great answer for you on that. That is how it should work. So I don't necessarily know why that's not working. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm going to have to think on that one. Um, by the way, you guys have the ability to reach out to me directly. Uh, I, I guess I didn't put it on here today, but... My, my Twitter DMs are always open. Uh, and I'll put this here on the screen briefly. Uh, you guys can see my email address is right here. If you want to shoot me an email with your issue, or more specifically, if you want to shoot me an email with a video of the issue that you're having, like, hey, I went through these steps, that would be fantastic. Uh, another option, of course, and probably the first option you should start with is to go to the Contact Us form and talk with them about it because they will be able to coach you through. They'll, you'll get an official ticket. You'll have a team of people that can work with you. Um, that's the right approach. I'm a good backup. If you want to reach out to me also, that's fine. Um, but I'm probably going to reach out to the same people you would reach out to on Contact Us, and they're going to say, did they open a ticket? And I'm going to say, no, they just reached out to me, and they're going to be like, have them open a ticket. So we're just we're just trying to fix that and have it go end around anyway. Um, so start with contact us. And if that doesn't get you where you need to go, then please reach out to me and we'll see what we can do. Okay. A Witter said you can get around. You can use APLA to get around the five tracks limit. That is true. Uh, if you're using APLA, um, you don't have those harder limits. Fabio wants to know if he can buy a device to use during his shower. Is that possible? Um, yes, it's called an Amazon Echo, and I just I just took a shower this morning and I used mine. Um, now you're going to say, but those aren't waterproof. Those aren't even water resistant. How do you do that? Um, I just put it outside the shower, um, but they are plenty loud. Alicia, do you have one in your bathroom? I do not, no. Uh, mm -mm. So my wife and I, uh, in like January timeframe, right before COVID, hired a company to come in and we completely gutted and renovated our master bathroom in our house. And it's beautiful and gorgeous. But one of the things we had is like there's there's two sinks and then in between the sinks, there's like a big storage tower, right? Like a big wooden tower in between. Mm -hmm. And I said, on top of that tower, I want you to put a power outlet for me. And they're like, what? Why? <laughs> what would you put up there? And I said, that's where like some kind of smart speaker or something's going to go. And so it sits up on top of this tower. You can't even see it. But anywhere in the room, you can talk and say the name and it'll start talking to you or playing or like you can do your... Um, why do I always forget that word? Flash briefings. Um, oh, I don't know yeah. why that just never comes out of my mouth. Uh, so I do a lot of that stuff when I'm in the shower. I'll just turn on some music or listen to flash briefing or whatever. Um, but it's far enough away from the shower that it's not going to get wet, but I can hear it perfectly. In fact, my wife argues that maybe it's too loud. But <laughs> the uh, I, I think that's a really, really good way to go. So my recommendation is if you want to put something in your shower, and here – Here's my life's philosophy on electronic devices. If you want to use something reliably um, and it's, it's there all the time for when you need it, it shouldn't run on batteries. That just, that's the end of the game for me. Anytime something uses batteries, I'm like, oh, well, that's a waste of my time then. Um, things that go in your shower have to use batteries. You would never run a live electric wire into your shower. At least I hope you wouldn't. <laughs> um, so because of that, uh, there hasn't been anything that I've even – considered that I would put in my shower that's just kind of like a suction cup smart speaker or something like that because it runs on batteries and it's going to die and it's not going to work as long as you'd like it to. Um, the Echo devices are fantastic. They're plenty loud and they live outside the shower and I, I really much prefer that because it's plugged in. So that is, um, that is that. I will say I do use a Bluetooth speaker in my bathroom, not in the shower, but you know, on the counter. Sure. And it would be nice to have an Echo device there so that I could um, talk to it instead of having yeah. to like, if you want to change a song or something when you're in the right. shower, now you got to get out and like touch your phone when your hands are wet and totally not a fun time. <laughs> you have, um, is the Bluetooth speaker plugged in? Like it's plugged no. to the wall or is it battery? It's battery. Yeah. See like that, that falls apart for me quickly, but right. one of these. 
The Echo oh. Flex, mm -hmm. this just plugs into the wall. And so in your oh, bathroom, okay. you just pop that into one of your outlets that you're not using, mm -hmm. which again, if you have a small bathroom with like the one outlet, that's already got your hair dryer and maybe a curling iron and uh, a toaster or whatever else you've got in your bathroom. <laughs> um, that uh, that can be trickier, but this, this little guy, I mean, they're like $15 when they're on sale. They're super cheap. Um, and then what you could do is pair this with your Bluetooth speaker. Do you still use that as the speaker? Mm -hmm. But then have this be able to, like you talk through this basically. Wow. Uh, yeah, that would work really well. So do you, you, I assume you don't have an Echo Flex? I don't. Mm -mm. Do you, maybe you need one. Maybe we should talk after. Yeah, maybe. I'll see if I can make I mean, that. That sounds like a great option. Yeah, I, I know people. We'll see what we can do. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, it looks like somebody's saying Kohler makes a shower speaker. That is on Twitch. Let me see if I can find that comment. That is on Twitch. Let me see if I can find that comment. Bring it down here. I probably should have the page load before I go there. The Kohler Smart Home shower head. Oh, the speaker oh. is built into the shower head. This has to be battery powered then. Yeah, the speaker oh, is removed. So you can bring it wherever you want to go. Like, cause I, cause I want to take my shower head out of my shower. <laughs> um, I mean, it's that's super cool that it's built right in there, but there's a point where you have to charge it. They don't talk about that at all. Rechargeable wireless speaker provides up to six hours of runtime. So every time you forget to turn it off, the next shower, you don't have any speaker. Right. Yeah. See, hmm. this stuff is neat to me. I like the innovation, but no, I, I wouldn't do this. Regardless yeah. of the speaker is, I mean, Harman Kardon speakers are good. Yeah. It cost? $159. Come on. <laughs> That's outrageous. No, no, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. I just scrolled again. Oh my gosh, you, there's just so much conversation today. I love you guys. <laughs> I'm just having trouble keeping up here. We're not gonna even get through all of these. I have 12 minutes left. Um, Oxygen Box says the new Apple TV does have a new remote design. I agree with that. And Drew, I will get back to you on why it's mandatory. I don't know that why necessarily helps you, um, but maybe I can work with you on some mitigation strategies for making your skill handle it the way it did. I know that I use the search query slot for doing what you're trying to do. Um, so look into the search query slot. That might be an option as well for getting the words that you need. Um, let's see. Any good video based materials for Alexa skill certification? Uh, Alicia, are there any videos that you point people to when they're trying to get their skills certified? Um, I don't have any in mind actually. Okay. Um, but that's I, definitely, I, I don't know that any exist either. So I think that's okay. Yeah. I mean, that's a good suggestion though. Um, yeah. our team does create videos for things like that. So, we can definitely do that in the future. Um, a Q311 is back about the, the max score. So yeah, Q311, what I would do is have a separate table, uh, an Airtable that is kind of an aggregation table. It finds all the unique usernames and then it finds the highest score for each of those usernames. So there's some easy ways to use some formulas to create those columns. Uh, but I think that's the way that I would go. And then I would pull data from that second table when I'm trying to get the maximum high score for people or you could even use that as a lookup value inside your other table so that it's all happening in one place. Uh, all right. Uh, Alex wants to know if you're from the certification or developer developer advocacy team. You're from DAG, right? Developer advocacy group. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Um, so 
so many things here. Uh, Steve Nelson says he has an Echo Flex with a nightlight in his shower room. Uh, I think that's a good idea. It looks like people posted some reviews of that shower head. Uh, yeah, the Gen 4 is plenty loud over the shower. The one with the clock display is really handy. Yeah, so even an Echo Dot is plenty loud for what you're doing in the shower for the most part. Oh my gosh, I think I caught up. Do you have any advice for someone who wants to join your corporation? Um, the, the, here's the one piece of advice I give anybody that's interviewing at Amazon. So the first step is go to amazon.jobs. Um, that is a website where you can see all of the listings that are available across the company. That, that's down to warehouse workers and truck drivers all the way up to you know corporate vice presidents of divisions. So like all of the jobs you'll find at Amazon are listed there. That's step one. Step two, when you get an interview or when you um, you know have a conversation, one of the things that will become really obvious to you is that we value the uh, leadership principles of Amazon here quite greatly. And so as you think about getting into an interview, a lot of the interview will be about evaluating your familiar, not familiarity, it's not a memorization game, but your adherence to a lot of the leadership principles that we have. And so you can find them. They're very public online. You can go read about them. I would recommend reading about them anyway. They'll make you a better employee, colleague, manager uh, across the board. But my recommendation for everybody that interviews at Amazon is to go read those leadership principles and then come up with a story from your past in your employment history somewhere that demonstrates that leadership principle. If you have one of those stories written for every single one of the 14 leadership principles, you will find pretty quickly that you do well in interviews at Amazon. Um, being able to demonstrate that you understand them and that you understand um, how your work history applies to those things will go a very, very long way. I'm not saying you're going to get the job because of that, but it's a good starting point for sure. What do you think I about that? Agree. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, having an example from your past uh, career experience for each leader, leadership principle is huge. Um, yeah. and just be, you know, prepared for that. For sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. Uh, Q311 says it would be awesome to have multiplayer gaming Alexa's in different households playing together. I agree. I think that would be super cool. Um, are you volunteering to build that? That would be <laughs> amazing. Uh, gold Zulu says he has an echo tap that he uses in the bathroom, which is a wireless speaker, but, you can set it on a base and it charges. Hmm. Um, let's see. <laughs> Q301 says, I wouldn't put one with a screen in the bathroom because that means it also has a camera. Fair. <laughs> Very reasonable. Good point. Um, they, all the camera ones, though, do have the little the little th slider, so you can close the camera at least. Um, but, yeah, I agree with you. Um, and I think that's, that's probably it. Q3 and one, I know you said this in, in joking. I'm going to put this on the screen just cause it's a little funny. Um, the non-screen Alexa people could also listen in on you farting. Sure. <laughs> for sure. But the, here's, here's the thing. And I like, this is a funny joke, but I want to be really serious about this. There is no way for people at Amazon to be able to open your microphone and listen to you. Not possible. Um, we have a light that lights up on them. Um, when you're muted, it is muted. Uh, I think on almost all the devices, it's a hardware mute so that we couldn't turn the microphone on even if we wanted to. Um, but there is absolutely no one at all that is trying to or attempting to listen to anyone uh, using an Echo device, I can assure you. So the moment that I find out that's true, I'm leaving. Like that is something that I am very conscious of, very worried because that is, of course, something that could be a possibility. Um, and I am, I'm promising you, if I work at Amazon, that is not true. Um, and if it is true, well, then I will leave because that's, uh, that is an absolutely unacceptable breach of trust for millions and millions of customers, which is not how Amazon operates. So 
I myself am not even slightly worried, but uh, I hope some of that maybe eases you guys as well. So we are coming up on time here. Um, I don't think, um, Sergio just asked, is there no Alexa skills certification anymore? Is that correct? Yes, they decided to deprecate the Alexa skills certification program, which was a certification like AWS certification. Uh, those programs are very expensive to run. And I think that they just didn't see the, the kind of participation or traffic that they were expecting. And so they decided to temporarily pause it. I don't know if it'll come back, but uh, there, there is always the possibility that something like that could return in the future. Okay. We made it almost an hour, Alicia. Good work. <laughs> um, I think I think that's all we've got for today. I'm going to have to go back and gather up all these questions. I, I did, There were so many. I did not do a good job of capturing a lot of them in my notepad, but we'll, uh, we'll do that here after. Yes. I mean, it was a lot of good conversation, though. A lot of good yeah. questions today. Yeah, for sure. Oh, the, uh, there's one more question, which is, what are the other AWS certifications that are available? There are so many. I don't even know if they'll show you a whole list. Let's start here. Let me drop this in the chat. Um, this is where you can start for certification. That just went to Twitch and Facebook and YouTube. Twitch, Facebook, YouTube. No LinkedIn, so I'll post it to LinkedIn as well. And you guys can check that out there. But there's those are this is not Alexa certifications. This is AWS certifications across all of the different AWS products that are available and combinations of those things. There are solution architect certifications um, that require some combination of like three or four different ones. Um, startup, there aren't any other certifications that I'm aware of uh, re with regard to Alexa. Not that none none authorized by Amazon. Um, I'm sure there are some third-party things that may be created, maybe at Pluralsight or um, at something like that. But no, there are, there are not any. Um, a cloud guru might have one, but it's a, it's not a official Amazon sanctioned certification. Uh, well, we're starting to get all the thank yous, so thank you guys all for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. Um, I, this is one of my favorite hours of the week. So I'm glad you guys were able to show up. I'm glad we had such a vibrant conversation. Uh, I'm glad we got to learn that Alicia was four years old when I saw a movie yeah. as an adult. So that's great. <laughs> um, uh, all of that is uh, new information. So thank you guys all for tuning in. We will be back here again next week. And don't forget on Thursday uh, at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, I'm going to be interviewing um, a couple of folks from a, a voice and um, neuroscience startup. So please make sure you join us right here. Uh, on Thursday. We'll see you then. Uh, thank you guys all so much, Alicia. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye everybody.